More now on our top story. As we've been reporting, a massive fire engulfed the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris Monday. Authorities do not yet know the cause of the fire, but believe it might be linked to ongoing renovations. The Paris fire chief says they managed to preserve the main structure of the cathedral, but there is still concern that interior structures could collapse. Adam Teal is the fire commissioner for the Philadelphia Fire Department and joins me now by phone. Uh, thanks so much for being with us, Adam. This fire seemed to spread very quickly. Why would that be? You know, churches have a tragic history with firefighters and fire departments. The exposed wood, the large open areas, the lack of compartmentation, and of course, many historic buildings have not been retrofitted with fire sprinklers. So that really kind of adds up to a worst case scenario for us in fire departments. And, and uh, Commissioner, I wonder what role, uh, besides the fire sprinklers not being there, um, what role did the age of this structure perhaps play in what we saw in Paris? You know, older buildings, and obviously this building has stood the test of time, and it was under renovation, and that renovation aspect also causes us concern when we are responding to fires. You never know exactly what's happening in an older building as it's being rebuilt or renovated. So a lot of challenges here, just an incredible job by the Paris Fire Brigade. And I wonder, is there something about the construction of these kinds of centuries old cathedrals that makes fires particularly hard to extinguish? Are there perhaps, you know, air pockets that are somewhat challenging with respect to, you know, providing fuel to the fire, but also being very difficult then for firefighters to attack? Right. Again, you sort of have the worst-case scenario. You have large open areas, which allows oxygen, heat, and fuel to mix and move basically unimpeded throughout the structure. You also have a lot of hidden areas where fire can travel without firefighters being able to access it or extinguish it. So, again, just really uh, this is a very difficult type of firefight, and the Paris Fire Brigade did it as well as uh, anybody could. And, Commissioner, some people are wondering, why wasn't aerial firefighting an option here? You know, that's not typically something that's done in the uh, urban firefighting environment. It's uh, actually very difficult, even in wildland fires, to access fires that way. And the most obvious thing is so dropping the water that way actually causes additional structural compromise. Water is very heavy, so that's not something you really want to do on a structure that's already been compromised by fire. And in those immediate moments, what are the first concerns when dealing with such a massive fire as this was? Well, just getting organized, getting all of the firefighters and fire apparatus, everything placed, getting access to water. Keep in mind the radiant heat from a fire like this is also tremendous, and you heard some of that in the reports from the scene. So just trying to get everything, get access to the building, and, of course, protect all of the surrounding structures, too. That's always a priority for us. And once the fire is out, is there any concern it might start up again? Certainly. I would expect that even when the visible flames are extinguished, uh, the firefighters will be in there checking for hot spots and continuing to, to wet down that structure for a, a very long time. It's my understanding, and of course we saw them putting themselves in very compromising situations to save some of the artifacts and do everything they could to salvage some of the structure, and they just did an amazing job at great personal risk. All right. Commissioner Adam Teal. Commissioner, thanks very much for your insight. Thank you.